Welcome to the Weekly Hijack. Hello. Uh, this is Once Upon a Time Edition. The episode was Nim Away. A Nim Away. A Nim Away. A Nim Away. A Nim Away. This is one of those episodes where everything seems to go wrong for the good guys. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, uh, and I don't know where to start on this one. I don't know about Ray, too. Um, I'm going to blame certain scenes I'm just going to say they were badly directed because I think most of the story beats hold true. But there are certain times when I felt like there are things that characters could have done. Like for one thing, teleportation magic is badly underused by the characters. <laughs> I think like, oh, you capture Snow White. Poof, I'll, I'll transfer, yeah. teleport her out of harm's way. Like, oh, oh, oh you you uh, have captured uh, my, my wife Nimaway. Poof, I will, I Merlin yeah. will transfer. Transport her somewhere else. Yeah, the problem, the the new way story is kind of interesting, but the the actual scene where she gets hurt and then he doesn't help her, and it, then it just didn't work. He doesn't heal her or transport her away. It's like, like, dude, that, these are like basic things anyone who's been watching this show would try. And, and you could have done it in such a way so that you hit those story beats and that happened. But if it had been like just too fast for Merlin to respond or something yeah. like that, then you might have bought yeah. it. Yeah. But you're holding her there. Like, again, would not have been as... Had they took the scene away of him just, like, healing this person? Like, if you didn't... No, she, he healed people randomly? Yeah, if you... Like, it was blatantly obvious that he heals people. <laughs> yeah. If you wouldn't have even put that top of mind in our head... But no, really, like, ten minutes ago, I saw him, like... <laughs> Heal this lady at the well. Like, I know he can do it. So. Yeah. And it wasn't like it was a magic blade or anything like that. It was like, it was like a... A standard thing. I do this every day was, sort of yeah. thing. <laughs> I mean, it was not... Though I, I was very pleased with their misdirect... They've done a lot of misdirect this of episode. ...of the Dark One being her and how they did it because it made a lot of sense... Because we were, we thought maybe that was her a while ago, and then then we were like, well, maybe, and then maybe we not. Saw that guy, and I didn't put together that it, the dark one isn't the one who destroyed their town. It was just a guy who wore that mask. Yeah. That then she ended up, which was a really great misdirect, but was that scene was awful because. I'm just like, I know I really saw him heal somebody, like, not that long ago. <laughs> he, he can do it. Another good misdirect is that, you know, he says there's two paths that could die or not. And we keep waiting for Merlin to die. Oh, yeah. You know. And we thought maybe this is where Emma finally went dark. And she didn't hear. But you really thought she was going, I mean, you're going to buy it. Yeah. So, I mean, well, it's a really good use of the, of the flashback. Because the, the best way to use the flashback is to set a time bomb and you're trying to figure out when does it go when off? When does it go off? And and to play with your, the audience's expectations of it. I mean, Lost did that particularly well. They have seemed to have caught on this season, especially using the flashback and the memory wipe. Yeah. In, a, in a quite a well good way. Well, and it was it was really tricky, too, because the whole Camelot, I mean, if you look at Camelot as a flashback, then we had a flashback within the flashback of like all of Merlin's history. Yeah. Well, I mean, we did that with Arthur's history, too. Yeah, yeah, well, but his his was a little bit more linear. I mean, I yeah. guess I guess so. But, I like yeah. okay. My other two arguments with this episode, which by and large I like most of them, I really did. I like they've done some really neat things with fairy tale mythology yeah. stuff that I think have been, have been neat. I'm always interested in seeing like the chalice, the the cup becoming um, Excalibur. That was clever. Was a neat thing. I think that mm-hmm. worked. I thought it was good. Merlin and the cup. Just asking permission to drink it was a little lame. I wasn't, which is not, I was not one of my big deals. My two big things, one, I didn't know you can just put any wizard's name, like any old witch can put any bloody's name on a sword and then you can control them. Uh, well, they did, admit, you know, it was pretty fast. They said it was Merlin's attaching spell, so obviously it's high magic. Okay. But, but I know. Just like, up why one- did we never put, um... Zelina's name on the sword. Or, 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 what's her face? I mean, she's good now, but... Um, Snow Queen? Or... No, no, no. Who, Regina? Regina's name on one, like, in the first season. Well, well apparently we didn't have Merlin's book. Yeah, well, Merlin's know? book is in Camelot. Okay. But uh, they could, still, to me, was a little juicy. It, it, it does seem weird that Merlin would just leave that... Like, it seems like something very important to hide. You know, like, just... I don't and know. Zelina just picked it up. She's just like... Oh, here it is. I mean, like, uh, to me, that was lame. Yeah. But um, my other thing was... She was probably up there forever, silent, just looking through books. 
Yeah, I know, no, no, I just think, yeah, I know, Andrade. Um, the setup would have been nice on that. Yeah, it would have been very <laughs> nice on that. The other thing is that some of this history thing they've done really well, I, I like, I'm very confused as to how this one person who has magic who killed someone becomes the dark one. Well, they've always had this, if you kill someone with magic, suddenly you're like almost irredeemably evil. Well, I, I know where he's I going, though. Never like, happened before? No, no. One well, they did. They did mention with the Holy Grail. I think because of the type of magic, it's so high. Maybe it has an equal mm. low. I don't know. I know. I'm. I'm with you. I'm trying to work inside story a lot. It, uh, that's a fair. It, I mean, it does seem. I was because I was wondering about that too. Because they made such a big deal at the end of last scene it's about this darkness being like some sort of force that they had to contain to the dagger or like, contain like, inside the dark one in order to control it, and then. Me? It would have made more sense if there was some connection to, like, okay, since the beginning of magic, there has been good magic and bad magic, and if this person is the embodiment of bad magic, how'd she get to be the embodiment? This one time she murdered this one person. It, well, it, it makes yeah. me think of when Emma went bad from that, like... But shooting uh, Cruella in Cruella, self-defense. Which she didn't even do except for in self-defense, and, like, yeah. I murdered someone, I'm evil. You know, like, she became... If they had tied it to somehow bad magic came and I, I don't know something that tied it to the beginning of bad magic. Now it, it does seem at least for Emma I, for I, later dark ones you have this psychic baggage. No, yeah, that makes sense she, to me. The dark one sort of becomes like an evil avatar. Yeah, you, know, like you Which get all these. Fine yeah, me, but yeah. What doesn't work for me is the first bad. It, the yeah. first dark. I one, think story logic is just. That's, uh, that, I know that's that, that, my argument yeah. with that's my argument with with this show all around is that they're not consistent in good. It must just be the, those chalice is so pure, so do do anything wrong with it, you utterly corrupt it. But she didn't do but anything. Here, and, and here's a question I have about speaking of the chalice. Yeah. Why why was she able to just drink it nonchalantly? Like, so the first guy takes a sip out of it, dying of thirst, and he's dust. <laughs> this girl. <laughs> Obviously, has thoughts of vengeance and darkness and desiring power, and so she's like, the gods were like, oh, okay. Well, she said, please. I guess. I guess. Yeah. I, That's my biggest con- my biggest complaint about the show. Is yeah. We're like a main complaint all around is their inconsistency in some of their things. Yeah. They're very wishy washy yeah. on a lot no, of their the, the their, their own mythology, basically. Mm, yeah. Exactly. Especially the ethics of magic are very, <laughs> very, yes. very, yeah. They're very, they're situational. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. Well, I mean, I guess in a sense because that's all they know. Like, yeah. if if there's no like absolute good, absolute bad in the show, which doesn't really seem to be, it's just kind of are you good or bad in the moment? Yeah. yeah. And and are you ever going to recognize what you did was good or bad? Which makes for hard mythology. Which makes for having a good deep mythology because you just change things as you, you know, you're like, eh. Yeah. I don't know. It, I mean, there were parts of this one I really liked. You know, I liked the Prometheus flame thing. The and Some of the mythology I thought was really good, which then in contrast next to some of the poor mythology makes me go, oh. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know what's interesting about this season? I mean, is that in many ways, you know, we've had a whole episode about King Arthur's flashback, a whole episode of Merlin's flashback. If they've really gone away from our main character flashbacks to a certain extent, which has been helpful yeah, because that's true. It, it lets us. It's like we were just rediscover. It's new people, and, and Merle's not been around very long, and he, he the actor's pretty engaged. You know, you, you're like, okay, I don't mind seeing a, basically a Merlin flashback. Well, and and I mean, we've had new characters introduced and then gotten their flashbacks, but these guys feel like some of the most important, like more vital to the entire. Yeah. Plot, show, well, it's our plot line than say we've been picking on Frozen yeah. a lot lately. <laughs> but it, as much as enjoy Frozen, Elsa and Anna's thing was like it was kind of grafted into yeah. the show. It, yeah, like, this is very back to basic. They've been you know the deeper layer of the basic black you know the dark the ones or the universe. You know what I yeah. loved. Yeah. I loved that they used the animation graphic from Sword in the Stone. Oh yeah, I love that. I was like, yay! I like that. <laughs> I, th- I think that is actually the the only like actual Disney 
yeah, like, like they show a Disney clip, clip. Yeah. That's, which is interesting. That's the first one they've actually I really done. I liked it because I, I don't know. I like that. Movie. I mean, they did they did that in the season premiere too uh, because it was yeah. the same scene. But you know, it's also helpful it's helpful that these new characters not only do they tie into the main you know there's some deeper stuff, but they're also related to each other. I mean, Merlin and Arthur mm-hmm. related to each other. You know, so you, you've got to somewhere where you did the whole you know twisted family of the of Emma Swan mm-hmm. because they did that. But now you got other tightly knit people. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It'll be interesting. It leads you to think this week that Emma had not made the decision, or maybe she had made the decision, but she only just rethought. We have not yet seen. And it looks like next week we will. We haven't yet seen what her plan what is. What if she is trying to do good or trying to do bad? Is she trying to do I mean, what Nimue we, wants or something different? Yeah. I mean, aside from. Friends, Aside from just making the sword, we don't really know what she's trying to accomplish. Yeah, we we aren't sure yet that she's completely evil. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that she thinks she's doing something good for people. She doesn't think she's doing it in a good way. I mean, way. she doesn't seem to like Rumple hanging around. No, she she doesn't mm-hmm. seem. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. So it's a pretty. I guess there's two two hour next week that the. False finale? I don't think so, no. I just they, probably, they did this last season for some reason. I think because of the way the TV schedules and work, Thanksgivings and everything. And Thanksgiving and stuff. They did this last last like where they had like a two hour thing that didn't necessarily have to be two hours. It was just it felt more like just two consecutive episodes. But I mean so they, we'll see. They got they've had great momentum all season. I mean, been revealing good stuff. Like I'm excited about next episode. Yeah, this episode was a bit of a mixed bag. I think um, yeah, you can kick someone; they they go unconscious. Yes, <laughs> that, that no, bugged me. Not even into like a stone wall or anything. Yeah, no. She's like, "I'm going to kick you backwards," and apparently, you hit your head, which, even though which, it didn't even look like that's what you hit, were you hit which, on the ground. Which does not help Zach's uh, dislike of the so charming. It's awful. And you know what? I have not liked. Where Zelina is a fantastic character. Uh, her use of her this. Season, yeah. their use of her has been pretty lame. I, I really, you could have left her in Smallville or <laughs> in, in Story Story Brooke, Brooke. and it would have been fine. Yeah, I mean, I think you're almost to me, she's annoying right now, yeah. which is a shame because she's a great character. Yeah. Well, I mean, her she can be annoying quite frequently. It's yeah, I, like I, she's, but she's annoying and doesn't. Like, she's out of place and annoying to me in this. And it's just like she could have been used better. They kind of drop her in whenever it's convenient. Yeah, and I was season, sort of surprised to see her at Granny's, actually. I was like, why, why not just leave her in the Camelot and the season castle? Is so, and the season, the other parts of the season have been strong enough. They don't need her. Yeah. Where before they've needed her because the rest has been crap. <laughs> you know, and she's been a, a, a bright spot in it. This season, like, she takes away from the story going on. And I like this story going. You know, I mean, it's sort of like decent. Right? We, she was an interesting addition to the last week's episode, though. Yeah. It, What'd she do last week? Like Emma bro- broke her out of prison to to give her an offer to what help her, and she's just like, ah, you'll come back to me later. I don't. I like staying in prison. And, yeah. and then they they like she's a tricky one to play in since everything else is so intense. I think it's yeah. hard to know when to put her in because she's she is kind of the odd man out. She is. In there. I, I still think she's. Her bigger role role will be in the second yeah. half of the season. Yeah, let's see how they play that. Which, speaking of, did you hear? Their pl- it sounds like for the mid season return, the, which will be their hundredth episode. Oh, I saw. I heard they had various people coming. Yeah, it sounds like they're doing some cameo palooza stuff. Like Pan is going to be in it, apparently. I yeah, he was be in. and Cora will make another appearance. I heard the Blind Witch was going to be in it. Blind Witch? I don't know. Like the Hansel Gretel were a witch. I don't even remember that yeah, character. It must have been a throwaway one time thing. But she's in it. I I, I hope we get to see uh, if, if all these guys are coming back. I want to see Hurley again. Yeah, <laughs> the, exactly. the Hurley giant. The Hurley giant. So, <laughs> all right. All well, right. anyway, we better wrap this up. So, until next time, this has been Tim. This is Nick. Bye. Bye. Bye.